Hello, and welcome to another session of Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and uh, this service is a joint effort with the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, sponsored by Digital Pathology Association and Path Presenter. Uh, we're coming to you today from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, home of the Stevenson uh, NIH Designated Cancer Center, here seen in the bright uh, morning Oklahoma sun sunlight. So our case today comes from the Stevenson Cancer Center. It's a 45-year-old woman who has uh, noted an enlarging fibroid and has pelvic symptoms uh, that uh, lead to surgery. Uh, there's no suspicion for malignancy. However, on uh, examination, uh, the myometrium appears uh, somewhat uh, odd and trabeculated uh, and has a uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, diffusely thickened uh, appearance with uh, some uh, worm-like uh, structures uh, evident. It's the sort of thing that uh, we might think about uh, stromal neoplasm, but in her case, the uh, endometrium appeared entirely normal. Here's a representative uh, section from her uh, uterine wall. And as you can see, it is a little bit uh, funny looking. There are some areas which appear slightly different from the surrounding uh, myometrium. We see uh, here an irregularly uh, outlined area uh, going around here. We see another area that looks a little bit different over here. Maybe some tissue down here that looks a little different. Little nubbins here, variable appearance here. Uh, rounded nest up here and uh, even up here some sort of subserosal um, um, projections of uh, uh, tissue that uh, look a little bit odd. So this is not the normal appearance of an aging uh, myometrium. Uh, there's something uh, here that seems to be uh, permeative, uh, not forming a discrete uh, fibroid type of uh, mass. So let's go take a look at some of this uh, uh, tissue at higher magnification. We'll start here in the subserosal area. And we can see that this uh, tissue here uh, looks a little different than uh, maybe this more normal myometrium here. This has a pretty high vasculature, some hyalinization, a lot of uh, squiggly type uh, nuclei in here, um, probably uh, smooth muscle type of tissue, but uh, it looks a little different. Uh, we're here right adjacent to a, a large vessel there, and then here, over here we see another area of this um, with uh, maybe a little cleft-like spacing, uh, maybe a little bit of a surface and cleft there. Uh, over here, this uh, lesion looks uh, similar. Uh, it has this uh, highly uh, vascular appearance here with some hyalinization to the stroma, and then a little bit of a cleft formation around the uh, periphery here uh, without much other uh, distinguishing features. Uh, we can look at uh, more of these examples. Uh, maybe uh, we'll come over to this area over here. Um, and again, we can see there seems to be a fairly sharp boundary uh, between this tissue and uh, the more normal appearing myometrium. Um, and if uh, we get a little bit uh, uh, hallucinogenic, perhaps, we might even think that there might be uh, some endothelial type uh, cells in a few of these areas. A difficult call without immunohistochemistry. Uh, again, the tumor looks fairly, uh, or the proliferation looks fairly monotonous. There's not uh, any cytologic atypia to these uh, uh, cell nests. Um, there's not mitotic activity. Um, there's not pleomorphism or necrosis, the features that we would worry about for uh, lyomyosarcoma. So is this, is this a lyomyosarcoma with just a very bland appearance that's invading myometrium, or is this uh, another entity? Uh, well, the cleft-like spaces that we see in several areas uh, may be a little bit of a help uh, to suggest that this is a um, um, sort of vascular uh, or endovascular type of proliferation. Uh, it's association with these other variable appearances. Um, and uh, has uh, no significant atypia, as we've noted. 
So uh, let's just look at this one little area here. Um, we can see here again that it looks like we may be budding in slightly into a uh, uh, vascular structure. So um, in, in some, this is uh, looks like a, a benign smooth muscle proliferation, possibly with some endovascular uh, growth. Uh, and so we're leading consideration here would be intravascular lyomyomatosis or intravenous lyomyomatosis. Uh, this is an uncommon but probably underrecognized entity, uh, particularly since we don't uh, always sample uh, some of the uh, uh, parametrial tissues and so forth where earlier early indications of this might uh, appear. The presentation tends to be very similar to low-grade endometrial stromal sarcoma, uh, in other words, uh, mild, mild uh, uterine enlargement, uh, worm-like growth pattern, and so forth. That may extend beyond the uh, uh, myometrium. There are several uh, morphologic variants, variants with uh, various uh, stromal elements that may be uh, present, uh, or very other uh, various other types of subtypes of uh, lyomyomatous changes. Molecularly, uh, these uh, those that have been studied appear to have uh, similar findings to typical lyomyomas. Uh, so there's not a known recognized uh, distinguishing uh, molecular uh, event. Um, and uh, these, uh, in about 30% of cases, can extend into the parametria and adnexi, and ultimately uh, may uh, potentially gain access to the inferior vena cava and more distant sites, uh, though those uh, cases are decidedly uh, rare. So generally, the long-term prognosis is excellent. And as we would expect, these tend to be positive with marker muscle markers, negative with endometrial stromal markers, uh, though they uh, most likely would be uh, ER and PR positive. So uh, distinguishing them from uh, endometrial stromal sarcoma, which is the primary uh, feature uh, or primary consideration in many cases, is primarily based on the H&E uh, morphology and uh, the uh, differential immunohistochemical findings, mitotic activity perhaps as well. So just for comparison, here's an example of the growth pattern of an endometrial stromal sarcoma. Uh, we've presented previously in one of these uh, sessions, and we see a similar sort of pattern of a uh, uh, wavy uh, intra uh, myo myometrial uh, growth uh, extension between fascicles and so forth. Very, very similar to what we've seen here, uh, but in this case, uh, more cellular um, and lacking uh, the uh, um, hyalinized vascular changes that we saw in uh, the previous slide. Here we see a very delicate, fine small vessel architecture typical of endometrial stroma um, and a very high cellularity. Again, not much cytologic atypia, but uh, in general, one might expect to find uh, some mitotic activity. Now, on occasion, you might find a uh, phosphohistone 3 stain uh, useful to, to try to document the presence or absence of uh, mitotic activity in such a neoplasm. Uh, but in, I think in most cases, the uh, morphology will lead you in the correct uh, direction. Uh, probably endometrial stromal sarcoma is more common, uh, more commonly encountered, in, at least in our practice, than is uh, intravenous uh, lyomyomatosis. Now, another entity which uh, uh, can enter into the differential uh, sometimes, but usually presents in a different location and manner, um, and that is uh, uh, lymphangiolyomyomatosis. Uh, typically, that presents in the lung, and here's just a nice representative example of what that can look like um, uh, as you encounter primarily in the sub uh, uh tissue areas a uh, smooth muscle proliferation that, again, can be fairly bland, but is not uh, the tongue-like or nodular uh, proliferation of an intravascular uh, type of lesion that one would expect with um, uh, intravenous lyomyomatosis. Here we have a smooth muscle proliferation. Uh, we have it extending along subserosal spaces. It may involve uh, interlobar septi, uh, for example, right here. Um, we see a little bit of that sort of proliferation uh, along in this area as well. So a, a different uh, histologic appearance, although the name uh, can be uh, somewhat similar, uh, especially if you're uh, new to the field. 
So in summary, our uh, sign-out diagnosis today, a challenging one, uh, intravascular lyomyomatosis um, occurring in a 45-year-old woman. So that concludes today's uh, discussion. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I hope you'll come back again to our channel, uh, subscribe, and uh, certainly like or comment on uh, the video uh, what challenges you've encountered with uh, smooth muscle tumors uh, and any suggestions you have for our channel or cases or uh, topics that you'd like to see us uh, cover in uh, future uh, videos. Hope to see you again next time.